This session of parliament might well see the UPA government seeking a ratification of the land boundary agreement with Bangladesh. It's just one of the many issues between India and Bangladesh that could be resolved but are awaiting the crossing of that last lap. Of course, in India, there is also now a raging controversy over the issue of migration from Bangladesh into India. Here in Dhaka, to take us through some of those issues is Bangladesh's Foreign Minister Deepamoni. Pleasure talking to you, ma'am. Wonderful talking to you. Let me start by asking you, there was so much expectation of the Tista Accord coming through between India and Bangladesh. The two governments, of course, reached a consensus. And then domestic politics within India, in a sense, played obstacle. How seriously could this issue impact the larger relationship between Delhi and Dhaka? Well, um, as um, the relationship between our two countries it stands now, uh, I would say uh, it is excellent. And uh, uh, it's uh, the same spirit that we had in 1971. Uh, I think um, it's again that kind of spirit that we are uh, experiencing um, between the two countries, uh, the way the both countries are collaborating with each other. And um, during the landmark visit of our Prime Minister to Delhi in 2010, um, the um, uh, joint declaration that the two Prime Ministers uh, uh, signed I mean that's had many things in it and um, over the over the last um, two years both governments have worked very hard um, to implement those and um, I would say that uh, we have done quite a lot we've done quite a lot a lot has been achieved um, what um, you talk about the expectation about these. No, yes, there was great just disappointment. before the just yeah. before the visit of uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh to Dhaka, uh, there was this um, expectation, uh, and it was it ran very high that um, the Tista Accord will be signed. Um, unfortunately, it didn't uh, materialize. Get, uh, materialize yeah. But um, a lot of other things happened, and uh, if we look at the um, positives that happened. Um, uh, quite substantial and uh, we are very happy with those but definitely uh, if we uh, could have had uh, this that uh, would have been perfect uh, but um, you deal with uh, imperfections <laughs> all the time so um, uh, yes people are disappointed people um, people in Bangladesh we would like to see um, this the deal done and um, we're waiting uh, and we would like it to be sooner rather than later. Is it your understanding that it will be delivered upon? <coughs> well, I believe that between the two countries, given the relationship, uh, it's only natural that we would have this accord and uh, would have this um, water uh, treaty. And um, we have, we share 54 common rivers. Mm. Uh, if we do this one, it will be only a second one. Um, so uh, what we have done uh, already during Dr. Manmohan Singh's visit is that we have uh, signed um, a cooperation, a framework cooperation agreement. And in that agreement, we have talked about um, um, dealing with the uh, water issues um, in, a, in a holistic manner, do, doing the um, basin-wide management of rivers. So that is... Um, uh, I think tremendous uh, progress uh, on this front. So um, I, I'm, I'm not unhappy at all uh, with the progress that we have made, but definitely we would like to have Tista. And um, uh, as I said, it's only the second one. Uh, were, were, <laughs> were, were you so delivered? I'm sure. Were, I'm sure. Were you surprised at Mamta Banerjee's uh, statements? And have you tried to independently reach out to her since then? Um, well, um, we uh, knew that it was not going uh, to be signed just just before, just, the just on the eve of it, just yeah. on the eve of it, and very late. Um, but um, we didn't know why at that at that moment. Since then, she has made statements uh, saying that there's not enough water. Yes, yes. But we have, I have uh, I have um, visited her. Uh, I have met her once. 
um, during my um, on my way back from Bengaluru uh, after attending the IORC meeting, and um, we discussed obviously uh, Tista uh, was one of the issues. And um, what was your reading? Did you, did you feel that she would come uh, around? Well, um, she she uh, said. Uh, she gave me her um, views and uh, obviously I uh, gave our views which is uh, that uh, it's common river and it's a common river and uh, there are rights um, uh, of many many people and um, it's not a question of um, somebody giving it to another uh, one person giving it to another it's, it's sharing and if we have less water then we'll uh, share that lesser amount. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about sharing and between two neighbors and um, that's what we need to do. The transit rights uh, issue that India and Bangladesh have been trying to work out for India to have faster access to parts of its own country in the East. How much of that is uh, based on a reciprocal understanding that Tista will be delivered by Delhi? And don't give me the diplomat's answer. <laughs> give, give, give me the real answer. <laughs> well, um, <coughs> We are we are working on um, the transit issue because it it is a um, very big issue because it it um, um, it consists of the uh, road transit, um, the rail transit, and also the water transit. So um, we are uh, we have actually um, engaged uh, a task force, a, a core committee, uh, which looked at the whole issue and then. Um, because this is new for us. Uh, so we tried to look at uh, other comparable situations in other parts of the world and uh, have come up with a, with a um, framework. And we are now uh, looking at um, what we need I mean, in, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of, um, of say, legal, um, um, what do I? Uh, Modalities uh, between legal them, yeah. um, instruments. Uh, where are the gaps and and we are now uh, we have identified the gaps and infrastructure development it takes time but uh, legal instruments uh, we are working on them w on infrastructure also both sides we are working on them. so it will take a little time um, I wouldn't say that um, one is dependent on the other mm. but it would be very nice um, if we could have these there it's, is that another way of saying that if Tista were delivered on transit rights would move faster? Transit would, no, transit is moving at its uh, due pace. pace. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it hasn't uh, been stuck anywhere. Uh, it's moving. Our work is going on because we, this is something that uh, we believe in because we believe in connectivity, regional connectivity. It's not conditional, um, it's not conditional I, I don't on think, I don't think it's conditional on Tista, but definitely um, having Tista uh, would definitely uh, be helpful. Another area of agreement that, uh, that, that seeks the next step is, is what's called the land swap deal, which is the enclaves on which Bangladesh and India have agreed to, to, to virtually swap these areas and give people who haven't had citizenship rights on either side those rights. Now this needs a constitutional amendment uh, in, in India and a two-thirds majority in parliament. So it doesn't just need the allies of the Congress party on support, it also needs other, other groups. I'm sure you're, you're aware of the real politic uh, that, that could drive or stall this. Um, are you expecting it to go through soon or uh, do you understand that domestic politics could mean that this could take a long time? Um, this is ratification that is needed and uh, we have been waiting. Uh, in fact, both countries have been waiting for uh, quite a long time. It's not 71, it, it goes back a long, long, long time. Yeah. Yes, and um, uh, I believe that um, India would deliver. Uh, Is there so a time frame? Well, I wouldn't because uh, I wouldn't put uh, any time frame because um, uh, I can say what I as a person uh, I'm going to do, but how can I say anything about a parliament? I mean, we have so many people in parliaments, they have their own uh, ways of dealing with things and uh, they have their own pace. So, um, how, how can you really... Uh, let, let me ask another <laughs> way. How, how patient uh, uh, is the political will here in terms of understanding that there is a government here that has its own majority but there is a government in Delhi that does not have its own majority so the decision making capacity is naturally influenced mm -hmm. much more uh, by domestic Absolutely, politics. Absolutely, but at the same time um, 
um, even during the um, Indian law minister's visit to Bangladesh, uh, uh, he was representing India um, in our celebrations of 90 years of Bidrohi, of yeah. Qazi Nazrul Islam. And um, he also had members of parliament uh, belonging to the opposition. And um, they all uh, spoke uh, in one voice about being um, good neighbors and good friends with Bangladesh. And uh, they did talk about uh, foreign policy of India um, being something where they all come together. If a government has um, uh, promised something to a neighbor or, or to another country, that um, uh, irrespective of whether somebody is in opposition or uh, in, in office, uh, they would support it. So that was the... Um, and that was the understanding that was given to us by um, as recently as uh, I would say about um, two months ago. Um, so, uh, and the other thing is, this is something that has remained um, as uh, as an unresolved issue between the two countries for quite a long time, and both countries are um, now looking forward to resolving uh, these long-standing, long-pending issues. And uh, I believe that India is as eager as Bangladesh is in resolving these issues. So um, uh, uh, I hope that uh, it's done soon. The border between India and Bangladesh is the root of many, many, many conflicts. Uh, and for India, and, and as you must have followed what's happening in India, the issue of migration from Bangladesh into India has become a very serious point of national debate. And that is because of the recent... Uh, very tragic conflagration in the eastern state of Assam. We have had a principled opposition party once again talking about deporting what they call illegal migrants from Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. This case is now even in the, in the courts of the country uh, talking about this. It's a very emotive and a very volatile issue in India. How does uh, the government here in, in Dhaka view this? Um, well, we had, um, you see, um, this whole region, um, we have to, whenever we talk about um, migration, um, we also have to know about the history. And um, there we have had migrations in 1947. We have had migrations also um, in 1971. Um, but during 1971, India um, hosted nearly uh, 10 million of our people. But I would say most of them returned to Bangladesh after our independence, um, after the liberation. Um, since 71, um, how many people have crossed the borders? Uh, either way, I, do, I don't know. We, we don't have any figures. Because the border um, is so porous. The border is porous it's and there, there are kilometers. always uh, I mean, toing and throwing all the time and, and uh, families, the way the borders were drawn, families were always going back and forth uh, from both sides. Uh, so I um, I don't have any figures. Mm. We don't have any figures, whether in Assam or anywhere, um, or in Bangladesh, uh, of uh, people who migrated. But um, when you hear political inside. parties in uh, India talk about deporting mm -hmm. what they call uh, illegal migrants, mm -hmm. does that concern you if that were to happen? Because it could happen if the court ordered it. That has happened in the past. What would be the response of and the government? And when these people uh, migrated, that would, uh, since when these people are there, um, that would definitely be um, something um, to look at. Um, and uh, I'm sure uh, the legal issues that are concerned, um, that uh, may be settled. Uh, and then once uh, these issues are settled, only then we can uh, say... Um, you don't see it as a point of bilateral conflict? I don't see it as a bilateral conflict, no, um, because uh, this has, uh, hasn't been raised with us, um, and uh, at least not in the not in the um, not in the uh, recent past. recent past, no. And um, um, there are uh, economic migrations going on uh, in so many places, but um, the I mean, this hasn't been this hasn't been uh, an issue that was raised with us. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't term it as a bilateral issue. Um, um, if, if there is something uh, that is going on is in Assam, they would have to look at the, I mean, because the... Um, um, because there isn't actually no whether they are settlers or, 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 or migrants, yes. but then the key question would settlers, be if migrants, migrants, when migration yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, so these are all uh, also um, some factual, some legal questions. 
So um, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, like to comment on that. Yeah, but you know that you yeah. on a just on a humanitarian basis, mm -hmm. one of the things that could come up because this mm -hmm. debate is happening in India right now, and the international debate is mm -hmm. on Bangladesh's uh, refusal mm -hmm. to take in refugees from Burma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Rohingyas, mm -hmm. and therefore, a number of people will say that, of course, the humanitarian refuge was given to mass migration in, mm -hmm. in, for example, 1971. But shouldn't Bangladesh then be doing the same for the Rohingyas today? And if it isn't, then why doesn't it understand you political see, parties uh, objecting uh, to Bangladeshi migration? Mm -hmm. You see, um, uh, Rohingyas uh, coming into Bangladesh, um, that also has a history, yes. and um, that is very different. No, from, I'm not doing a, I'm, I'm not doing a literal yes. comparison, uh, but the principle yes. of it. Yeah. Uh, you see, Bangladesh hmm. um, has never forgotten 1971, and that is why when the Rohingyas entered, there was a mass entry of mass exodus from Myanmar into Bangladesh in 1979, and then also in um, 1992, um, we let them in, and we have been, um, I would say, um, very gracious hosts to a large number of um, Myanmar refugees and until 2005 um, most of them uh, went back they were repatriated um, about 24,000 were left and then the repatriation process completely stopped um, and in the meantime I would say about anything now I, um, it's an estimate that uh, anything between 300 to 500,000 mm. illegal um, entrants into Bangladesh, um, they are now uh, residing in, in the neighboring areas, uh, in the bordering areas. Um, and this has been a huge burden on Bangladesh. Bangladesh, as you know, it's one of the um, most densely populated countries in the world. And uh, the Rohingya refugees are being very well taken care of. Uh, in fact, uh, I would say that they are um, better off than the population, our local population, uh, who live outside uh, the camps. And uh, that also gives rise to sometimes to social tensions. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are, but about the... But in many uh, ways, uh, that's uh, the uh, argument made in India in the East as well. So we have been very good to them. We have been very, very good to uh, the refugees and the illegal entrants. They have also been here uh, now for a number of years and uh, uh, it is putting a huge burden on Bangladesh. And we have been talking about this since their entry. We have been talking about this repatriation process. This is not like one person migrating for economic migration having uh, relatives on the other side going there or one person coming to this side it's not like that this is like mass movement mm. um, I'm sure something like that didn't happen in the recent past to Assam mm. uh, if something had happened that happened in 1947 um, during the partition but not now um, and that also happened both ways so um, this one uh, the Rohingyas we have been doing our best but we also have, this is when a refugee situation occurs, the, it is also the responsibility of the world community to share the burden. But that burden sharing um, hasn't been there. There have been uh, suggestions by some the, groups that if you let them in, the world will step in to help. Well, in the refugee camps, some of them are helping. The UNHCR and some others are helping. But uh, about the illegal entrants, they're not refugees. So how do you deal with them? Uh, they have to be repatriated and uh, for us voluntary repatriation is the only uh, solution and uh, so we have been bilaterally uh, discussing this issue with Myanmar and we hope that uh, there will be um, a solution but um, I mean, even, even the talks are very slow uh, <laughs> but for Bangladesh it is um, now has reached a point where we cannot take any more burden. Mm -hmm. um, but what we have done is, when they, uh, some of the people came through boats, we have given them food, we have given them medicine, we have given them even the fuel for the for the boats, uh, so that they don't get stuck um, on the water. So um, and then uh, return them. Um, and since then they have returned, and uh, the now 
mm, not too many people are coming. coming in. Mm. So, and, and this time also there was um, sectarian violence. It was not a state persecution uh, like in the past. So um, uh, for a sectarian violence, if something happens, uh, you do not expect another uh, country to. Yeah. And so, I mean, this time the situation was facts were very different from the past. Uh, and that is why we believe that uh, our response was also um, 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 not illogical at all or not irrational at all. Um, we believe that we have done the right thing and uh, what the best we could offer, we offered. And, and we have been uh, talking to the Myanmar people and they have also been able to um, uh, bring the uh, violence down. Yeah. One of the other uh, irritants between India and Bangladesh uh, when it comes to the border has been what the border security force in India will say are smugglers or criminals or infiltrators mm -hmm. and your, your government has maintained uh, that even if they are criminals arrest them but you have argued that they are being fired upon indiscriminately. Is this an issue that is now resolved? Well, um, not yet because you see um, border killings are still happening. Um, though definitely um, in terms of numbers um, uh, it has gone down but um, still uh, killings are happening and this is an issue which uh, um, I think uh, this one, uh, one issue jeopardizes all other uh, achievements, I would mm. say. So um, you mean this casts a longer shadow than most absolutely, other issues? Absolutely, absolutely, and and people um, and feel very strongly about it, and uh, that is why we would uh, we have always urged the Indian side um, and and uh, from the uh, Indian government also, um, they have repeatedly said that um, they will try and uh, to try to contain their. Uh, forces uh, try to make sure that they uh, exercise utmost uh, restraint. So um, um, trend is uh, good uh, but, but not we, want yet. we want the numbers to go down to zero. Now something that grabs uh, headlines for all the wrong reasons uh, is somebody who never stays out of the news for too long is Taslima Nasri. <laughs> and I ask you about her because I know you you're a lover of good books and she's a writer <laughs> and she has had asylum in India previously mm -hmm. which stopped as well because of various controversies at home. How do you, how do you view her case? Do you, do you view it as an, as an international case that Bangladesh could have or should handle differently? Uh, well, she is uh, a citizen of Bangladesh uh, um, and uh, she has been living in exile. She had um, um, through her writings, um, she sort of um, she became very controversial, mm -hmm. and um, there were at that time the um, um, extremist forces, the fundamentalists were also uh, very vocal uh, about it. Um, so there was a situation, maybe that, um, or she chose uh, to leave the country. Uh, so as a citizen, um, I'm sure she has all the rights. And uh, I, mm, I don't. Uh, I'm. I read uh, a lot of books, but uh, I have read one or two of her books. Um, I'm. I'm not very fond of her. I would say, um, as a writer, um, obviously she has uh, mm, her own views, and she is entitled to that. Um, I. I. So not a great writer in your I'm not a, I'm not a huge, uh, fan. Very huge fan of her as writing. No, not, not the style. No, not the style of writing. The very provocative kind of writing. Um, okay. Yeah. On a more personal note as we end, uh, mm -hmm. a woman in politics, Bangladesh's first woman foreign minister. This is a part of the world that all of us come from where mm -hmm. the paradox is that women have never had a problem leading our countries, being in the mainstay of politics, yet uh, it doesn't always percolate down. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have great symbols of power and great symbols of political power, uh, but not necessarily empowerment and freedom for mm -hmm. the ordinary mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. How's the ride been for you so far wearing uh, the female hat on? Has it, has, has it, has the gender ever come in the way of 
you're being able to do your job is there well, resistance comes, from other quarters uh, well it comes once in a while <laughs> <laughs> it always uh, does. i would no say that it, it has yeah. never come it has come uh, once in a while but um, uh, i i think i um, i grew up in an environment where i was always treated as an individual and um, when um, when i um, when i felt uh, like a woman i thought i always um, thought that uh, that was a privilege uh, and that was um, wonderful wonderful to be a woman and um, uh, there were so many things that uh, i mean the most important thing in uh, in uh, life um, uh, childbirth that um, woman carries that child so uh, why shouldn't i feel proud about being a woman and i i feel proud and i feel very comfortable being a woman and in and politics um, is in it politics is it an advantage <coughs> or disadvantage or neither you see um, in our um, personal lives also in every household um, yes there are still uh, many discriminations but uh, at the same time uh, mothers are the decision makers yes. in most houses yes. i would say yes. um, and we have great women champions um, even the if you look at the religion um, i i keep saying this uh, in buddhism um, they say that um, men are the carriers of knowledge women are carriers of wisdom um, in hinduism you have all the great goddesses and in islam um, first person to convert uh, was a woman uh, first martyr um, in the cause of islam was a woman and our prophet uh, was actually uh, surrounded by women very powerful women uh, very influential women uh, women played great uh, role um, roles in in his life so um, i think uh, from that point of view also in our society bangladesh is a melting pot um, of religions cultures and all that uh, here we we see that quite a lot um, women are um, at some stages of life they are very powerful uh, they are the decision makers at another stage uh, they are very vulnerable um, there are still a lot of discrimination that goes on uh, there is still a lot of violence that goes on uh, but um i think uh, women decision makers um especially the present prime minister in bangladesh has made a tremendous uh, difference um uh, by uh, in her previous tenure doing the uh, national women's development policy uh, doing a, a lot of things for women uh, empowering women and that it was there was a reference to it in her speech uh, at the people's empowerment conference as yes, well and yes yeah. and she believes in it yeah. and and um that is why uh, there are so many of us um, in the parliament in the cabinet uh, in the party and um, um uh, as i said uh, yes sometimes uh, we also feel um put upon well, in a sense yeah sort of but uh, <laughs> not always at times also i think um um it's also great uh, i'd say most of the time it's great being well, a woman well most of the times <laughs> it's good enough pleasure talking <laughs> to you thank you wonderful talking to you thank you so much